Hey there, it's been a while since I've done a video that is about one of my favorite apps on the planet. And I'm just a huge Notion nerd that has been caught up with a lot of business things, but I did wanna come back to my YouTube channel to go to my roots and have a video that is at the end of 2024 that really showcases some of the new updates that I'm excited about inside of Notion. And the most important one that exists is actually the one that you may not even know the power of, and that's webhooks. So for those of you that are unaware, I am a content creator for obviously this YouTube channel that is my own and a bunch of other different SaaS companies. Effectively, I run a content services agency that helps out a lot of different SaaS products produce content. And the issues that I run into at that company often get alleviated through AI and through automation. But the problem with Notion is that for the longest time, you haven't been able to do instant automations because of the fact that it didn't have a webhook capability. When you are someone who works in as much content as I have, you know notice a lot of things that could be improved with automation to save time, especially on the organizational side. And while Notion had built in automations before, it's always gonna be limited to its own platform. But what we have now is an opportunity to utilize something called webhooks, which then connects those different Notion pages directly to an automation when an action occurs or a button is pressed. Previously, what we would have to do is we'd actually have to wait for a certain period of time or run an automation manually outside of Notion, maybe even use third-party apps like Tapti in order to run these different automations on a run press button sequence. But here's the thing, even those things wouldn't work right unless you had different properties set up in certain ways. But now it's actually so simple that in the world that we live in, this is not a joke. I just, I can't get over this. You see this automation that I have here? You can set up different automations inside of Notion and then connect it to webhooks. And you can do the same thing with buttons. So say for example, I have content ideas from a meeting that I had with a client. You'll see here that this is connected to content here. If I press add content to calendar, this actually is going to add it to my content calendar through a make.com automation. Look at that. It's making the automation immediately. Now, you might be saying, okay, that's cool and all, but what does that even mean? Well, what it means is something pretty important. As you can see here, this is the webhook where it essentially took the Notion data from that exact page, so it has all the property data from that page, and it then grabs the client because that's connected to the meeting idea, creates a piece of content that we can then put on the content calendar, and then I have it auto trigger a bunch of other automations to set some stuff up. So as you can see right here, in one button press, I got it to make this long video, which is then repurposed into two shorts on the calendar. It's set to five days from now. It has all of the subtasks automatically created and the tasks are gonna get assigned automatically too. This is something that I can't over or understate this, is groundbreaking. This is just one use case. I've set up a million different automations already so I mean I know that this is probably not something you've seen before either and likely would take a lot of work for you to set up yourself but this even set up Google Drive folders to connect to this exactly now this might be all going over your head or not I don't know but what I do know is that for me it's gonna save me inordinate amounts of time because I can do different button presses like that a lot and I can do different presses of not only buttons but random things inside the system and then it will trigger so for example you'll notice here these automations are based off of things like pages being added. Maybe I want to add a value to that different idea page, or I may want to go to webhook here. And when I have that automation trigger here, maybe I want to have it look up different ideas for different titles that could occur based off of these ideas. I don't know. It could be as simple as I want to send a webhook to make.com and then integrate it with ChatGPT. And then it fills the different pages with not only things like the description of the content, but different content title ideas and different script ideas. Because the truth of the matter is, when we're looking inside of Notion, there's a lot of different things we can do. There's a lot of properties that we can change that might trigger something else. And while we might want to trigger something else directly inside of Notion, there are limitations. And by utilizing the API and webhooks, to have it connect to something like this, where it has the ability to get my client data, figure out what content type it is, and then add it to the calendar. I also set a trigger in here so that check when the last time a piece of content was created, and if it was created in the last 24 hours, it actually added five more days past that most recently created one, because oftentimes what I do is I go through in here and just press the button a bunch of times to add it to the calendar. So I wanna make sure that they're going in sequential order, right? I don't wanna just like have it all be five days from the time I'm pressing the button, like sequential five days plus five days plus five days makes more sense. And this 
this isn't the only application you can think of. I actually went through on LinkedIn and saw someone make a post where I went, huh? It was so baffling to me, but it works. We have this example invoice I have right here and I actually created buttons to create the invoice, to send the invoice and to remind clients of the invoice. I have three automations here where I can press this button. It'll take this payment data and it'll actually create an invoice on either Stripe or PayPal, mattering on what the client needs. There's also a button to remind the client and to void the invoice. So if you notice right here, I don't have any invoices, but if I press send invoice, what it's going to do is it's going to actually create set invoice and then change this to needs or payment requested, I should say. And then you'll notice, just check it out. It's going to have $200. It's going to be connected to Jake Browning, who's the person that's supposed to be billed for this. And it's supposed to have a due date of five days from now. This is incredible. It made this in a moment and say, okay, wait a second. I don't need this invoice anymore. Compress void invoice and it triggers an automation in make.com. That'll actually go through and nullify the invoice item, the invoice ID, the URL, and look what happens when I refresh this, it voids the invoice. Now, why is this important? It's important because I used to have myself and others manually add the invoice item ID, invoice ID, and URL so that it could auto follow up and send new messages to different people that we work with, whether it be clients or sponsors. And then I'd have to really make sure I got the invoice ID and those types of things right when I was sending them out and captured here because then when I got paid, it auto tracks in my system, which is really convenient. It automatically downloads the invoices as well. But on the send out process, it was still manual because there was no way for me to really connect the initial trigger to just this page. Sure, could I have checked off a box and then waited for it to follow that sequence? Yes. That is actually something, but this is just way more convenient. And if, for example, I wanted it to go based off of an event happening in Notion, I could too. Like even if I wanted it to run based off an automation by checking a box and then it runs it. Here's the thing. In the world that we lived in before, that was going to be either something that required another app for you to have it work instantly, or you had to just wait. And you could often have to wait like multiple hours if you didn't want to have something running so consistently that it costed a lot of automation operations. So in the world we live in, I'm very grateful for webhooks. There's a lot of different opportunities here. If you want to try them out, I really recommend that you do because they've saved a bunch of time for me. Even when I press create and send invoice, you'll see right here that it actually sends it to my Slack channel. Obviously that was a test, but it sends it to a Slack channel that's connected to a client and emails the client. Literally, if it's set up in the back end, it'll send out the proper invoice to the front end. And for me, I can't ask for anything more convenient than that. That's gonna save hours a week and hours a month. And it took me a couple hours to make that full automation, but it's all possible and convenient because of webhooks. So if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. We're back. Check out the Notion course if you haven't tried it already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.